Hey everyone, this is Scott Kerminga. Um, talking about moral compasses. And the one thing that I noticed uh, in 30 plus years of being in the classroom, not everybody has the same ideals, the same ethics, the same morals. Um, it all depends on upbringing, it depends on the people around you and sometimes it can be exhilarating because um, what they're doing and the way they're thinking is absolutely correct and then there are other times where they're so far off it's just dis a disappointment and one of the things that we do in our classroom is to work with students in developing their morals and ethics so I want to go through and talk a little bit about what my moral compass is and then how it pertains to my students. You'll notice up in the upper right hand corner or upper left hand corner uh, a little diagram here of uh, different points on a compass. Um, if you're right, um, I don't know if it's right or wrong. Uh, we all have an innate understanding of what is right and what is wrong. We might call it that little voice in our head or it might be the angel and devil sitting on our, our shoulders. Uh, but we all have that ideal of what is right and what is wrong. There's something in us that tells us that. Um, does it depend on the situation? <clears throat> if if you have true morals, according to some researchers, uh, the situation should not depend on it. You're either going to have a right or you're going to have a wrong. Okay. Uh, on the bottom side of this, you'll see it says it's an individual choice, so what's the big deal? Uh, if every individual had the same ideals of what morals are, our country to actually be in a better place, but because we don't, um, then that's why we have to make rules and laws. Um, and then the other one on here says, as long as I don't get caught. If that's the thinking that you have, uh, you don't have ideals, you don't have integrity, you don't have that moral compass that is needed to uh, to be successful, okay, and to be mature. So let's go through and look at some of the things that uh, uh, that we want to talk about in this presentation. Uh, Dr. Salmons asked about a resource summary. Uh, this is what I put together. I'm not going to go over it. Uh, I'll let you have a chance to to read this uh, on my presentation on our uh, community board. But uh, it gives us a good look at at what we um, what we can learn from it. Uh, this gentleman right here, Chi Do Li, uh, probably had some of the best insight of anyone that, that uh, I watched on the videos of what integrity is and what our moral compass is. And his, his summary of it was outstanding. I just absolutely loved it because truth became uh, the very first thing, is that if you can't be truthful, no one's going to respect you and you're not going to have a chance to do anything with anybody at that point in time. And when you're dealing with kids, uh, the truth is so important. They don't want to be um, sugar-coated. They, they don't want us to beat around the bush, if you want to call it that. They just want to know how it is, especially our kids in this day and age. Uh, back when I was in school, it was just a little bit different. All right, my moral compass. These are the things that I think are important for me, and this is what I promote to the kids. Uh, at the very top, the north, uh, this is the straight and narrow. This is, this is what I believe in, and that's integrity. If you don't have integrity, you have nothing. And uh, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's in the grocery store, uh, whether you're trying to buy a car, whatever it is, if you don't have integrity, people are not going to believe in you. Uh, they're not going to respect you, and whatever you're trying to do is is going to be a waste of time. Um, one of the other things is developing a sense of right and wrong. Uh, like I said earlier, the little voice in our head tells us that we're either doing it correctly or maybe there's something incorrect about it and we really need to reevaluate what we're doing. Uh, a young man in one of the videos uh, was talking about the right and wrong um, and how people have different ideas of what right and wrong is. Um, but it, no matter what philosophy you use, what uh, mantra that you believe in, um, 
right and wrong is still right and wrong. It's either done correctly or it's done incorrectly. Uh, there shouldn't be much of a gray area in there. Uh, as a sports official, we don't have a gray area. It's right or wrong. Uh, students first. Uh, I firmly believe that, that students are important, uh, that they need to have a say, they need to be heard, and if they're wrong, they need to be corrected. And there's a lot of students that don't like that because they want to be uh, the adult already, uh, which they're not, um, or their parents have told them that uh, they don't have to believe us. And then it becomes the parents' responsibility. And around here, in our case, we have a lot of uh, discrepancy and a lot of distrust in between parents and the teachers uh, in a lot of our philosophies. So uh, it's something that we need to build and something that we need to fix. Going the other direction, you can see fair treatment. Uh, I had a football coach that said, I can treat everybody fairly, but I can't treat everybody equally, which means that certain situations deem different consequences or rewards. And But the treatment needs to be fair. And that's what we have to do around here. That's why we have rules and regulations and laws. Uh, empathy. I feel for every one of my kids that comes through my door because of what is going on in their lives outside the door. And if I can express empathy, then I can relate to the kids a whole lot better, uh, which then means that they're going to be treated better, uh, they're going to develop a sense of right and wrong, and then this is where integrity comes in. Uh, trust. Um, probably could have had that up on top uh, with integrity. Um, because it, it doesn't matter what workplace you have, what, uh, what job you have, what activity you're doing, if the people around you that are participating with you don't trust it, they won't do it. And so trust is extremely important. Um, and if you don't have that trust, how are you going to build it? And if you lose that trust, how are you going to get that back? And that's something that we really see a lot uh, when we deal with kids. Uh, be grateful. Uh, I think being grateful and being thankful for things is is losing its um, credibility. Um, we decided as a building several years ago that we were going to promote saying please and thank you. And I, if I have a kid comes up and, and makes a request but doesn't say please and doesn't say thank you afterwards, I call them on it. And if I don't do it, I want them to call me on it because we need to be respectful uh, of each other in what we do, what we ask from them, and especially the choices in there they're going to make. Uh, if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, you see respect their dignity. Uh, the worst thing that we can do is take the dignity of the kids away because then we lose everything that's on this. They will lose trust. They, they won't believe you anymore. Uh, they don't think that you're fair. Uh, everything that you do from then on is going to be wrong. And so if we can respect their dignity, we're going to get along with them better. It lowers our discipline problems, uh, it increases our productivity, uh, our scores go up, and, 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 and the overall atmosphere of the classroom is very, very positive. Honesty is the last one down here in the positives. Um, again, that goes along with trust, that goes along with right and wrong, fair treatment, uh, we got to be honest with the kids, and if if it's something that's really important and really hard to take, uh, then I have to sit down with them, and we do a heart to heart. And a lot of times it hurts both of us, but in the end, at least they know where I stand and I know where they stand. At the very bottom, you'll notice that uh, I have six different uh, negatives down here. Um, these are things that can tear us apart. Uh, guilt. Whether we feel the guilt or whether we are expressing guilt on someone else or we're actually making them feel guilty for no reason just to have control over it uh, is not the way to run yourself in a classroom or as an administrator. Anger. Um, when I first started teaching, and you'll see this in some of my examples, uh, when I first started teaching, um, intimidation was the mode of discipline. Uh, you can't do that anymore. And because of that, then... Um, you have to find different modes and methods in order to fix that discipline issue. you got to get rid of the anger. 
the, these kids see enough anger in their own home life uh, with their family, friends, peers, uh, things like that, even at their job site, they don't need it from us. This has got to be a safe place. Uh, disgust. Uh, a kid comes in and doesn't feel good, uh, having a bad day, whatever else. And if we look at them and roll our eyes, we're not going to gain any trust with them because now they think that we're making fun of them and we have lost them for at least that day and maybe for the year. Uh, racism. Um, that's a whole different uh, seminar right there. That's a whole different class right there uh, dealing with racism, especially because of what is going on today uh, in our world and the changes that at least the United States are making in addressing racism. How do you do that? What's the best way to address it? And these are things my kids talk about all the time, but they have to know what's the right way to do it and what is the wrong way to do it. And, there, and we talk an awful lot about that. So that's something the kids are starting to develop. Uh, fear is another one. I don't want the kids to be scared in here. This has got to be their safe place. And it doesn't matter what we're studying, where we're at, whatever. Every teacher in my building right now uh, understands that this is their safe place, especially because our kids live in an unsafe uh, environment. So we've got to make it so they want to be here and give them a full day of, of relaxing and, and feeling good about where they're at. Then the last one is control. Control is, is a difficult one to deal with, um, especially with peers, uh, because we, we include bullying in this. And if you eliminate the bullying, uh, kids have to give up control, and they don't like to do that. And, and parents don't like to give up control to teachers to allow us to help them and to nurture them and to uh, give them the ideals of integrity and what is right and wrong. So it's, it's a fight sometimes in between parents, teachers, and students over who's going to let go first and then who's going to allow that to grow from there. So it's, it's, it's a pretty big um, wide variety of information, uh, of terms and words in my moral compass, but, but when you've been in the classroom as long as I have, um, this actually is probably a small part of what I do and what I believe in the classroom, but these are the most important ones that we work with our kids. Uh, here's my list of references. You can look at that in the presentation. Um, my correlation on here is, and, and I want to say this to the new teachers and the uh, first, second, and third year teachers, um, be who you are, but also develop a um, surrounding aura of integrity. Um, the kids will see right through you, and I don't care what level it is, but they will see right through you. Um, but once you establish that positiveness um, and you have a moral compass that does point north, stick with it. And, and that's probably the best advice I can give you uh, for this subject anyway. Uh, make everything that you do relevant, um, especially if you're teaching them right and wrong. Give them examples. Uh, let them make choices and then have fun discussing it because the kids will learn from it. And then in 30 years when you're like me, look back at all the dumb things you did uh, and all of the, the left turns instead of right turns that you made uh, and use that to become a better teacher, a better administrator, and a better person. And if you can do all of that, um, then the kids are going to look back on you and and on what their school is and they're going to consider everything a success so uh, good luck with this um, develop that moral compass uh, and when you do stick with it for sure